So the goal of this video is to put together a really quick robot file and op mode to show you how you can write simple autonomous modes really quickly. And this time I'm actually using OnBot Java so I can connect to my robot via Wi-Fi. All right, here's my robot file. It's the hardware pushbot sample that they give you, but I've stripped out the comments and I've removed the motors that I'm not using. I only have drive motors on my robot, and so I removed claws and arms and things like that. So it's a very simple robot. Now look at this highlighted code. All it's doing is four lines of code that tell all the drive motors to stop. Now, I could copy that four lines of code and use it in every op mode to stop my motors, but that's four lines of code. It's really repetitious. So, to make it easier, I'm going to make a stop driving function. And I start with the word public so that it's accessible in other places that are using my robot code. Void means I'm not going to return anything. The name stop driving, two parentheses, and then an opening and closing curly brace. Now currently this function doesn't do anything. We put no instructions in the curly braces. I'm just gonna copy the stop code and put it inside the function. Now every time I call stop driving, all it will do is run those four instructions and stop all four motors. All right, now let's look at the op mode. This op mode is based off the push bot auto drive by time linear sample. I've just made sure that it references my hardware robot code. I removed the comments and removed any claws and arms. So it's a very simple autonomous. It drives forward and then stops. Here you can see we're doing too much work. We've got four lines of code to stop the robot. And the robot is the my hardware robot where I created the stop driving function. So now I can replace these four lines and just say robot stop driving. This is obviously much more efficient than writing four lines of code every time. Let's build it and see what happens. Robot drives forward and it stops. Now let's go back to our program and see if there's any other places where we can write more efficient code. So here we have about nine or ten lines of code just to tell the robot how to drive forward for three seconds. Let's see if we can make this more efficient as well and change it so that all we have to do is write one line of code. Back in my hardware file I'm going to create a new drive straight function next to the stop driving function. It's going to be public so I can access it from other places. And I'm just going to paste the original code from the op mode for driving straight. And then I'm going to make a few changes. We don't need the reference to robot because we are actually in the my hardware robot code. So we can access the motor names directly. Now unlike the stop driving function, I don't want to hard code the power to zero because I might want to have full power of one or I might want to go half speed of 0.5. I might want to go negative one to go backwards. So we're going to pass in an integer called power and power is going to be a variable that we can then use in this function. We are also going to provide a float, and float means decimal, and the decimal is going to be the number of seconds that we want it to drive. And for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. So now we want to replace the references to 1, which is the power, with the variable power, so that every time we call it, we respect the power that's provided to the function. Next we need to be able to deal with the seconds and keeping track of the time. And you can see that we have a runtime variable. Well, we haven't actually created that here, so you can see we created a variable like this in the op mode. So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it right above the reset function. 
So what we're doing is we're creating a runtime variable, which is an elapsed time. It's going to keep track of the amount of time that goes by. And we start off with it by resetting it to zero, making sure that it's going to start counting from zero. We're going to hold off dealing with this op mode is active function call. So for now, we're just going to comment it out. And a comment is a piece of code that will not be run by the computer. It'll be ignored. So now we're in a while loop that says do something while something's true. And so we passed in the number of seconds and we want to say while the runtime counter, that clock that we created, is less than the number of seconds that we requested, print to the screen of your phone some information. And that's what telemetry is. So I'm going to pass in a telemetry variable because the telemetry that's in that while loop right now is not a variable that's been created. So I'm going to pass it in from the op mode. And don't worry if you don't quite get it. I think it's going to become clear when we actually call the drive straight function. Here I'm just cleaning up the string that will be printed to the phone screen just a little bit, calling it drive straight. So you'll see this on your phone. All right, so now we have our drive straight function written. We can use it over and over in our op modes and not have to write 10 lines of code every time. So we're going to take drive straight, go back to our op mode, remove the 9 or 10 lines of code that are there, and go robot drive straight. Now drive straight is different than the stop function. We said we need to give it the power, the seconds, and the telemetry. So go back to drive straight and then tell it how much power you want. Let's say I only want 50% or 0.5 and I want it to go for three seconds and then I need to give it the telemetry so that it can print to the phone screen. Now let's add step three. After I stop, let's say I want to go in reverse and go backwards. Now all I have to do is type out one line and say drive straight, give it a power, a time, and telemetry. Then let's say I want to stop driving. It just takes one line of code. Let's say I want to go forward again. Then I just need to type in one line of code. This is much easier than copying and pasting nine or ten lines of code over and over. All right. Now it's time to build it and test out this program. So I click my build button and oh boy, I see that I have a mistake. So it says conversion from double to int. It gives you the file name and the line. So it says it's in my auto drive by time line 25. I've got a conversion from a double, which is a decimal a longer version of a decimal than a float, and I'm converting it to an int. And so what I really wanted to do is make the power on the function a double, a decimal, and not make it an int, since I'm giving it a 0.5. So I build it, and it's successful. So it builds now, but I see I have another mistake. My step three, driving backwards, isn't going to drive backwards, because it's a positive number. To make it go in reverse, I need to give it a negative power. So I'll build it again. It builds. Now let's see how well it works. So you can see that when it ran, it did all the steps. It drove forward, it stopped, it drove backward, and then it drove forward again. Now this part's not necessary, but I'm going to go back and talk about it really quickly. Without checking the op mode is active if you have a really long loop that's going to drive for a long time your robot won't respond when you click the stop button on the phone so if you want to make the stop button work when you're driving we want to make sure we have access to op mode is active and op mode is active is on the linear op mode so we need to pass in that variable And then we can take op mode, which we're creating as a parameter, removing the comments, and we can get to the op mode is active on the op mode variable that we're passing in. And so it's going to run while the op mode is active and the time is less than the number of requested seconds. 
So now we added a parameter at the end of drive straight, so we need to make sure that we pass in that parameter. And in this case, we want to pass in the op mode. So we're going to pass in this. We're saying, hey, we're in op mode, pass us in. Use this as the value for the parameter. And if you build it and run it, you will see that it still performs the same way and that you could stop the program with the stop button on the phone. All right, so we've created reusable functions that will stop the robot and drive the robot straight forward or straight backwards. Your challenge is to come up with some functions that will help you turn and that you can reuse them over and over without having to write a lot of code all the time.